Hey guys, it's officially fall here in Houston, even though it's still pretty hot, but we are getting some cooler weather. And I just wanted to bring you through my garden and show you a little update on how my fall vegetables are doing so far and what I'm doing here on October 1st. So first thing, I wanna give you a little glimpse into my journaling system for my garden because you have to kind of write things down in order to remember when you planted things, when you should expect a harvest, when to know what to do things. And so I have a nice little garden journal that I used to journal in, but it just got to be a little too much. I just like plain and simple one line thing. So let me show you what I got. Okay, so the first thing I did was go through and based on a planting calendar in my area i listed out by month what i needed to do like in august plant inside broccoli brussels cabbage celery etc kale in or out and so i went through first and did that all the way through a little bit into march but mostly it was for the fall so as you can see for the fall i started in june um all these things i already did and so Back on June 8th, I wrote down exactly what I did. So on June 8th, I planted my sweet potatoes and that is this bed right here. They're not looking too pretty from the outside, but hopefully down below that dirt, they are getting more mature and would be ready to harvest hopefully in the next couple weeks, maybe even next week. So if I planted them on June 8th, they are, 120 day sweet potatoes which means 120 days from june 8th which would be october 8th i should be able to harvest sweet potatoes so if i wouldn't have written written that date down i wouldn't know when i'd be ready to plant uh, to harvest my sweet potatoes so you got to pay attention to that um so i went and wrote the dates of everything that i did even things like august 22nd I found squash vine borers in my pumpkins and by September 4th I pulled all the pumpkins because they were dead from the squash vine borers. Even though I did surgery on them and tried to do different things to help, they got them real good. So um, September 8th I started hardening off those veggies and then you saw my video with the kids where we transplanted on September 11th, we transplanted those brussels and cabbage and stuff which is this bed and so cabbage is looking good that's the kale all along the edge these are the rubine brussels sprouts those are so pretty with that purple color love those blue scotch kale right here and this is my celery all growing really well. I think I'm going to spray some more BT. As you can see, we have a little bit of damage here on some of the leaves. My assumption is caterpillars, but I also am gonna sprinkle down some slug repellent, just in case it's also slugs. Okay, so then September 15th is when you saw me seed my carrots and lettuce and beets and rainbow chard. So today, October 1st, thinned carrots, beets, hardening off broccoli, and trimmed onions. So you saw me trim the onions in my Instagram stories. Well, today is the day for thinning these carrots. So I planted these on, planted these seeds on September 15th. So this is what they look like. Those two rows. Now there's a blank spot right here. So I could throw down some more seed all down here and then on the other side is where my lettuce is let me show you where my beets are so here's my beets and this is where i planted the rainbow chard but i do not think any of them came up the seed that i had for the rainbow chard came in like this little kit someone had gifted me and I don't know how old it was. You know, actually, I see a little one right there. So that might be rainbow chard. 
but none of the other ones came up as far as I can tell. So, all of these beets, so they need to be thinned to one plant per section. Okay, so I'm gonna use my little eyebrow scissors here. And so I have four little seedlings that popped up in this little section. This one right here already kind of fell off on its own. So I'm gonna cut that, make sure to get that out of there. So I'm going to only choose the one that is the strongest and straightest. So both of these look pretty good. Um, I think I'm gonna keep this one. So you could go through and gently try to take out the other seedlings and transplant them elsewhere, but that is a lot of work. So you kind of have to determine what you want to do. Now in some areas, I might leave two. These are pretty far apart. They're about one inch apart. I might keep letting those grow and see what happens. So I'm just gonna go through here and trim them out. All right, that looks pretty good. So we just have about one per little area there. Plenty of room for those beets to grow nice big bulbs. This is my blackberry, thorn blackberry. And it's getting pretty long. I stretched it over and tied it to this trellis here. I have weeds growing in here, <laughs> mostly. But I also threw some sweet, sweet potato slips in here. And so I have some growing up there and I have some in the back you can see that are going up the trellis. Um, I planted those later. I actually took those as transplants from these. And so I planted those sometime late June, maybe July even. So I'll wait to pull those up. All right, so I'm gonna do the same exact thing for these carrots, except as you can see, these are a lot closer together. <laughs> and I want my carrots to be about an inch and a half apart. That's all I'm really worried about. So I'm just gonna kinda go in and cut what I need to. I do wanna mention that you can eat these little carrot tops, just like little microgreens. You can throw them in your salad. Okay. I'm all done. Not sure you can actually tell the difference because I left all of the carrot tops there, but I did thin them out a good bit. When they grow more, I'll be able to see if any of them are too close and competing for space. So my lettuce, my lettuce doesn't look really too close. So I don't think I'm gonna thin this out any. Um, this is a butter crunch variety, and so it's not big heads, it's leaf lettuce, and so it doesn't need a whole bunch of room. So I'll just keep that like that. These are the Tigerella tomatoes that I transplanted here that I grew from seed. They're doing really well. I have three here and two over here growing on this trellis. It is now time to pull that watermelon plant that I had growing up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and yank that out. Okay, well, unfortunately my camera did not record me pulling the watermelon off, but Simple enough, I just had to cut it into pieces and yank it off. So since I now have a space in between these two tomatoes, I'm gonna go ahead and transplant another one of the Tigerella tomatoes right here. I haven't seen any flowers yet on these, but I do have some flowers on my beefsteak tomatoes. So on these beefsteak tomatoes, I have some really nice flowers here. And also, I'm pretty sure I saw some growing, yeah. Got some little babies growing in there. 
and I just have these staked to a piece of bamboo for right now. I mean, it's already just as tall as the bamboo, so I'll have to stake those up a little bit better as they grow. So these cucumbers I seeded out here on, let me grab my paper. Okay, so I seeded these cucumbers out here on August 9th, just direct seed into the ground. And I planted, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, I think six or seven of them. And a little ladybug right there. Um, I am already getting some of this, these, this dead foliage here at the bottom, which tends to happen on my cucumbers pretty much every time. And I think it's just, you know, between the heat and the rain, we had all that, the hurricane and the rainstorms, who knows? But I just trim off any of the funky looking leaves as they come because I don't want any powdery mildew to build up. I also don't want to invite pests. The more diseased leaves you have, the more you invite the pests. He's my friend today. Thank you, friend. Thank you for eating any aphids that you find. Because I have so many little seedlings planted here, I am gonna be really intentional about pruning and pruning well. Um, this is a small trellis and so this could overwhelm this trellis very quickly, all of these little seedlings. So I'm not wanting to do that. Cucumbers make runners. And if I see too many runners going crazy and overtaking things, I will prune them off. So the plant can put more energy into the main stalk and producing fruit or vegetables, I should say. Don't be afraid to prune your cucumber leaves that look bad. It's better to get them off the plant, gives the plant more air flow, and keeps any kind of mildew and pests at bay. You never wanna prune off more than a third of the leaves because you still need to have photosynthesis happening. Okay, that looks much better. The bottom looks a little bald, but it's fine. This is how much I pruned off, by the way. So all these leaves look nice and healthy, and that's what we want. So these are beefsteak tomatoes here and a few more of the tigerella variety. This long one that's bent over, that's the one I'm gonna transplant over by the trellis. That's my eggplant that's still going pretty strong. I need to harvest one of those eggplants. My bell peppers are looking a little weepy. I, um, I gave them fertilizer, put some compost around, but honestly, it's the I think it's the weeds. I have some ivy growing on that back fence and it is taking over even my garden beds. It's so hard to keep a hold of and I don't have enough time to come out here and yank it all out lately. So I think it's sucking up a lot of the nutrients that's around the bell pepper plants, therefore leaving the bell pepper lacking some nutrients, which is why you see the discoloration of the leaves. So I need to get a handle on that because that bell pepper plant still got a lot of life in it. Both of them do. So that's the reason you really want to keep your beds weeded because those weeds, they also eat all the nutrients in your soil. All right. Speaking of weeds, <laughs> This is my little corn patch. 
and I had added some compost a couple weeks ago and now I have lots of weeds in there. So I need to come through and weed all this bed. I had planted, seeded some new corn. I didn't write the date down for that, gosh darn it. Anyway, corn's doing pretty decent since I got rid of all the little caterpillars that were growing on it. Okay, so these are my broccoli seedlings that I've had in the garage and I started hardening them off today. So I have them on trays. I had them in the sun for a couple hours and then I pulled them back into the shade. And so I will leave them outside because my garage temperature is not drastically different from outside temperatures. Um, so I don't have to stress about completely hardening them off to the temperature, but I do have to harden them off to being in full sun as compared to a grow light. So my plan is to have them in the sunlight tomorrow for more like four hours, then bring them in next day, six hours, bring them in. And then I should be able to go ahead and plant them in the garden. That's a squash and zucchini. I did have some aphid damage. Um, even though they were in the garage, I found some aphids on them. So I sprayed them with neem oil. We'll see if that works. But they're doing pretty decent. They need to get in the ground. Okay. So the, the hurricane kind of made my bougainvillea fall over a little bit right here. Uh, so I need to stake that back up or like tie it back up. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, I am just going to use some twine kind of wire, flower wire. Much better. Much better. Awesome. A lot of little plants that I still need to get in the ground. All that coleus I grew from seed. Never got it in the ground yet. It is what it is. Okay, next chore. Well, first this morning I came through and I topped some of the coleus that was too long, tall, and I just put it in water so it can root. So I'll be able to have extra plants when I go to put the other ones in the ground. All right, next chore is getting a handle on this sweet potato vine. I need to get my chairs back. <laughs> the weather's getting nice. I need to have a place to sit. And uh, it looks nice and poofy with the sweet potato vine, but um, yeah, I need to get rid of that. It's growing into my grass here. Okay, now these are my rose mallow hibiscus and they are starting to, sorry I'm in the sun here, they are starting to go into dormancy. They're pretty much done blooming for this year, although it looks like I have like one little bud right there. For the most part they are done and they will go into dormancy, they'll lose all their leaves and the stems will turn completely brown and dead looking technically dead so then I trim them back all the way to the ground for them to come back next year Got one Cajun hibiscus blooming right now beautiful bird of paradise back there all three of the bougainvillea that I had in those hanging pots have lost their <laughs> flowers uh, from when I bought them because we had all that rain. Um, they need some water right now actually. But that's okay, they'll flush back out. Alright, now I need to get a hold of the sweet potato vine in my agave because it can easily take that over as well. It's starting to climb up in there. So let me get a handle on that.
Okay, I didn't video this, but the next thing I came through and did was prune out my elephant ears. Just, you know, dead ones or ones that were hanging like way too low. So covering and shading some of these front plants, covering this lamb's ear right here. The lamb's ear needs sun, so it doesn't like to be covered too much. So I do have to come through and prune those out. The caladiums are pretty much ending for the season and so I'll put something else there. I'm going to leave the bulbs in the ground because they should overwinter. I have nice pine uh, needles that fall here so that'll be good mulch for the winter. Um, I did want to show you this is just kind of growing wild. I might have thrown some back here at some point but this wandering Jew, the purple variety, it's just so gorgeous. Again, I did not plant this here. I may have thrown some scraps at some point, but I really do hope it overtakes this whole area because it's so pretty. It's just got that iridescent look to it. Gosh, I love it. And this is my back fence, and what do you know? Elephant ears. <laughs> That's all the stuff that I trimmed out from the sweet potato vines. I don't have anywhere else that I need it, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to transplant it. This is where I throw all my scraps and I have more Wandering Jew there with Purple Queen, more Elephant Ears, more Purple Queen. Lots of fun stuff back there. I have another Bird of Paradise in this pot. This plant gets like 75 to 90% shade. Like I have a hydrangea right here and it gets the same amount of sun and somehow it still bloomed. I'm like shocked gorgeous right and those plants are just so unique I also have some purple oxalis in here that purple shamrock I really like that and trash obviously all right I'm gonna do a little bit more pruning of elephant ears in this back area All right guys, thanks so much for coming along as I did a few little fall chores and garden work. Um, you know, I try to do this kind of thing every few days just to keep things trimmed and looking good. And so I still got a lot to do. I still got a lot of weeding to do this week and put those broccoli transplants in the ground. So anyway, thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it inspired you to go plant today.